course, we weren't able to support every deserving candidate, uh, but these 22 candidates taken together, I think, helped demonstrate what we're all about. And so I'm very proud to share this, uh, this first wave of endorsements with you. Uh, so uh, we can't do a drum roll exactly, but uh, with, uh, uh, with great excitement, uh, let me take you through uh, uh, the names. Uh, first of all, Gina Ortiz Jones. She's in a critical uh, U.S. House district in the state of Texas. Uh, I, I think that uh, she ran such a great race last time that it uh, scared the incumbent Will Hurd uh, out of the race. So now it's an open seat. And we have an opportunity for a key pickup with somebody who is uh, pioneering and uh, with a record of military service, uh, exactly the kind of uh, uh, generational leader that, uh, that we need uh, more of in the U.S. House. Josh Shapiro, who I just spoke to today, the Attorney General of Pennsylvania. You know, right now, Attorneys General are a great example of how state, uh, sometimes down ticket state uh, offices, are playing a really important role in holding this administration accountable, protecting healthcare, supporting the rule of law, and making sure our democracy is protected. Sandra Hauricke, uh, a member of the phenomenal Nevada State Assembly, a majority women legislative body that has been just uh, cranking out wonderful legislation. We've got to make sure that we return uh, people like Sandra to uh, their seats uh, in the upcoming election. Michelle De La Isla, uh, a fellow mayor, she's the mayor of Topeka, Kansas, and stepping up to run for U.S. House. Uh, you know, Kansas has been surprising America uh, by getting, I think, reconnected with a more progressive tradition, and I think that uh, she's going to be in a position to do that. Plus, uh, always a good thing when we have more uh, mayors, as far as I'm concerned, in more positions of responsibility. Speaking of mayors, LeVar Stoney, the mayor of Richmond, Virginia, uh, with a very exciting uh, administration and doing really important work to uh, protect his constituents. Uh, also an example of uh, a generational leader who I think is going to be uh, with us for uh, and making a big difference for years and decades to come and a friend that I'm really proud to back. Annie Custer, who you may remember if you were involved at all in our New Hampshire campaign, uh, a uh, highly effective, decent, smart, compassionate member of Congress who uh, I think it's very important for us to put our weight behind. J.A. Moore, uh, who was uh, one of our strongest supporters in South Carolina, uh, really came to politics largely by way of tragedy. His sister, uh, one of those who uh, lost their lives in the Mother Emanuel shooting, uh, and has turned that tragedy into being a powerful voice, not just on issues around gun violence, but economic empowerment, uh, lifting up the black community in Charleston and, and uh, in his uh, area of South Carolina, and uh, uh, someone who uh, I think will be uh, uh, someone to watch for a very long time. Lamont Robinson, who made history as the first LGBT out black representative uh, elected to uh, an assembly seat in the state of Illinois, making a big difference in uh, his uh, hometown of Chicago and uh, somebody who, uh, uh, again, I think uh, in, in the years to come will, will be someone to watch. I'm proud to support him. Uh, speaking of state legislators opening doors, Malcolm Kenyatta in Pennsylvania. You know, the president just today reminded us by visiting how important Pennsylvania is. And uh, uh, Malcolm is uh, a part of a whole caucus of people doing uh, wonderful work in uh, the Pennsylvania House. We need to add to their numbers, and he's going to be a leader who helps us do it. Sharice Davids, uh, running uh, in Kansas. She, uh, I think, turned a lot of heads when she won the very competitive House seat in Kansas last year. She's one of uh, a group called the Frontline Freshmen, members of Congress who uh, have uh, flipped to districts who are going to be a very important part of keeping the House in Democratic hands, and who have a style about them that I think helps reach across the aisle and bring uh, more voters to our side in the same way that we try to do in our campaign. The same is true of Lauren Underwood, who I was proud to campaign for in 2018. Uh, she is uh, in a, a very competitive Illinois district. She's uh, got a nursing and public health background, could not be more relevant to the moment that we're in right now. Yvonne lewis Hawley, one of several candidates we're backing in North Carolina. North Carolina is a really exciting state to watch, a place that was written off as a red state in the past. But if you uh, look at the dynamics that are going on there, uh, so much potential and so much on the line and so much to be gained by seeing her elected as, uh, as uh, lieutenant governor in uh, an increasingly purple state. Uh, Jamie Harrison in South Carolina. Uh, I don't think I need to say much more than that he is running to retire Lindsey Graham from the United States Senate. Uh, but also, uh, Jamie uh, is a terrific candidate. I, I think we, we would all be excited no matter, uh, no matter what to make sure that uh, we sent that message uh, with Lindsey Graham. But uh, Jamie Harrison is somebody who I got to know when we were both running for DNC chair. Uh, he was the state party chair of uh, South Carolina and brings a level of intellect and energy uh, that will make him a, a phenomenal U.S. Senator. 
uh, Don Beyer, who is a, a great friend to our campaign and is a great voice on issues from national security to integrity and oversight in government in the U.S. House in uh, uh, coming from Virginia. Uh, proud to support him. Uh, Roy Cooper, the governor of uh, North Carolina, uh, again, uh, really changed what people thought was possible, I think, when he took that seat. Uh, had a great conversation with him the other day. Now we've got to make sure uh, that we uh, reelect him and send a powerful message, uh, as well as making sure uh, that there continues to be a strong state legislature, which is why we're backing Sidney Batch, one of uh, many deserving candidates in the North Carolina State House. Cal Cunningham is uh, running for Senate in North Carolina, uh, a uh, military veteran, Army reservist, service-oriented person who will be a, a real credit to the state uh, and somebody that, uh, that I think in, in many ways really rhymes with, with the values and the spirit uh, of our campaign and, and uh, proud to support him. Uh, Lucy McBath uh, in the highly watched Georgia 6th District, uh, one of uh, uh, the most dynamic, uh, but also one of the most vulnerable uh, freshman uh, members of Congress of color and somebody that I think we've, we've uh, got to rally behind to make sure that uh, uh, she can continue to bring her unique voice as a cancer survivor and gun violence survivor uh, and a very effective first term legislator. Uh, Kate Schroeder in the Cincinnati area running for U.S. House uh, with a, a Midwestern, very commonsensical approach, but also a deep background in healthcare advocacy uh, that's going to make her election more timely than ever. And Anthony Brown, uh, who is uh, a member of the U.S. House from Maryland, uh, an Army veteran, uh, somebody with uh, uh, an intellect for thinking about the future of security in this country, uh, and uh, deeply involved in uh, keeping this country safe, somebody uh, I'm really glad to back. So hopefully that gives you a sense of the range of uh, uh, the candidates. Again, uh, we, uh, we couldn't support uh, in this first round everybody who's deserving, but we've got just a, a wonderful cream of the crop back a can, uh, a round of candidates to support. And now I need your help to make sure that we're here for them. Uh, now you may notice there were two names that, that are on the list if you're following closely that I didn't mention. And that's because I'm, I'm very excited that they're here with us right now. They are two candidates who uh, uh, really embody uh, my uh, uh, passionate belief in the power of local leadership. Uh, one is Christine Hunchowski, uh, mayor of Parkland, Florida, who's now running for state legislature uh, there in Florida. Uh, the other, Jevin Hodge, running for Maricopa County office uh, in Phoenix. And uh, they are with us right now. Uh, nobody better to introduce them to you than themselves. Uh, so I'm gonna invite each of them to, to uh, say a little bit about what motivated them to run. Uh, and uh, let's start with uh, Mayor Hunchowski coming to us from Parkland. Uh, thank you so much. And um, first of all, I'm so honored to have received this um, endorsement. It means the world to me. Your campaign just embodied uh, bringing humanity back into politics. And um, I think we see now that it's needed more than ever. Um, I've been the mayor of Parkland for a few years now. Um, my friend was actually our state rep. And unfortunately, a few weeks ago, um, she succumbed to her three-year battle with cancer. And before she passed, she had asked me if I would um, consider running for her seat. And I love being on the local level here in Florida, though we get preempted a lot on the local level. And um, so I'm running for the seat now to bring some of these local voices up to Tallahassee. Before COVID-19, um, people kind of thought everything was fine. And I think COVID-19 has really exposed a lot of the cracks that have always been there that maybe not everybody was experiencing for themselves. So while we're in this crisis mode and navigating, um, bringing everybody through this crisis as well and as healthy as possible, it's also now an opportunity to gather people around these common human issues that we're all dealing with and really gather a group together to make a difference. In Florida, we've had issues with our unemployment system. It's a measly $275 a week. And now we have people who for weeks now, they applied and they can't get their, um, what's due to them on unemployment. Um, we have water issues going on in our state. Um, we have gun violence issues going on in our state. The interesting thing is COVID has shown us um, there are ways to solve problems if we put our heads together and really work toward them. Gun violence has been down. Um, the air quality has been better. And so I'm going up there to hopefully bring a voice to a lot of the people in my community. Um, mental health, as you know, Pete, has been something that's been very important to me. 
I actually lost a friend um, to suicide a couple of weeks ago. And I think there are certain human issues that um, really are common to all of us that just really need to be elevated on a state level and bringing those stories to the state level. And I'm hoping I'll be able to do that. And that's why I'm running. And I really appreciate your um, campaign was wonderful. Your rules of the road, I think, were something uh, that guided all of us and I hope um, continues to guide everybody going forward because um, the more we work together, the more we remember our common humanity, the more we realize that we're more connected than um, disconnected. I think the more we're gonna get to some solutions that will benefit everybody because it's an investing in our country, it's investing in our people, and it's investing in our future. Thanks so much, and uh, I hope everybody watching sees now why I'm so excited about uh, supporting Christine and, and uh, her race, somebody who's clearly in it for the right reasons, and uh, I'm especially moved to, to hear you uh, talk about humanity and, and how that links in, because uh, you know your experience uh, in so many different ways of uh, responding to loss, responding to tragedy, and responding to it in a way that's uplifting and moves us forward is, is so needed at a time like this where uh, we're, we're seeing all of, uh, all of the chaos and division and cruelty and, and, uh, and even more loss and, and, and fear of loss than usual. Uh, that can motivate the human heart in a lot of different directions. And uh, uh, folks who Always. followed my campaign remember how I, I talked about how leadership uh, really matters in, in terms of what it brings out of us. And, uh, uh, and I think you're, you understand that so well. And uh, you know, from seeing the dynamic of, of cities and states, the tug of war sometimes with cities and states, and as you said, there's a lot of preemption, which is to say mayors being blocked going on in Florida. It's going on in a lot of places. Texas, you may have seen the coverage uh, where mayors trying to keep their communities safe are being blocked by their own governor. Um, that's why we need state legislators who understand uh, that all important local perspective. And that's what you're gonna to bring to the state house. So I'm so, so excited to support you. Thank you uh, so let much. Me, let me turn now to uh, Jevin Hodge, someone else I'm very excited to be supporting. He is running for uh, county office in Maricopa County, which is uh, one of the most populous in the United States. Uh, he uh, represents a, a new generation of leadership, a uh, passion for serving and supporting youth. Jevin, I'm gonna turn it over to you to introduce a little bit about yourself, what motivated you to run and how people can help. Mr. Mayor, I have to say thank you so much for the opportunity to the Winnie Era team. You all have been absolutely incredible. Thank you. And Madam Mayor Christine, your leadership is much needed right now. And, and it's, a, it's definitely a fortune to be here with you all today. Team Pete, I want to start by saying y'all have been absolutely incredible. The happy warriors, y'all have shown us so much love. Thank you so much. Those of you who were following us uh, last night, we uh, did the Pete happy dance. And so we released it on Twitter. Check it out, at Jevin for AZ. Um, we did it for you all. You all came out and showed us love. And so Team Hodge came out to give that love right back. And so I just have to say thank you first and foremost. My name is Jevin Hodge, and I'm running for the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. I, um, it, it's, it's an honor to be here with you all. So I'm gonna tell you a little bit about myself, tell you a little bit about the race, and then um, we'll get going from there. I'm a proud Arizona native, born and raised in uh, the great state 48, uh, home of uh, Tempe, Arizona, which is home to Arizona State University. I'm the son of a single mom, my mother, Bredetta Hodge, an absolutely incredible woman, mind you. She's the first African-American woman elected in the city of Tempe and the president of the Tempe Union High School District Governing Board. So I've had the uh, fortune of looking up to her my entire life. I am a George Washington graduate and I'm a, a strategic communications and social impact consultant by day at Link Strategic Partners. A lot of my colleagues are here on the line with me today. And so we get to work with governments and nonprofits and communities around the country on how to solve problems. And we, I love what I do every day and that's what I plan to bring uh, to elected office. The Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. So Maricopa, you may remember Maricopa County from the, uh, the horrible sheriff that we had for 22 years, Sheriff Joe Arpaio, um, who, and, and no need to talk about his record of uh, inequity and harm to our communities, but Maricopa County was brought to light uh, because of the disgusting policies that were put forth. We're the fourth largest county in the country with about 4.5 million people. And the country, the county is governed by five people who uh, manages a $2.5 billion budget. And so much like a county commission in a hybrid of a county executive, the Maricopa County Board of Supervisor has, uh, Supervisors has legislative and executive powers and handles 
every issue known to man under the sun from environmental protections to infrastructure and zoning to public works, public parks, public corrections, public schools, public hospitals. And so when you talk about a position that is impacting the everyday life of the Arizonan, um, the Maricopa County is that office. Maricopa County Board of Supervisors is that office. And what we're planning to bring to the Board of Supervisors are three key pillars. Number one is being a true advocate for infrastructure. We're the fastest growing county in the country, so we need to make sure that we have the infrastructure needs that supports the county and supports our residents so we can have a happy, healthy place to grow, live, learn, and play. The next of which is well-being, which is uh, broken down into two different buckets, educational well-being, investing in early childhood education. I'm the proud president of the Booker T. Washington Child Development Center, the longest running early childhood center in the state of Arizona. And so I understand the needs of educating young people on up, working with our K-12 schools in the Maricopa County Community Colleges and economic well-being, making sure that we are supporting local businesses and, 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 and organizations that want to uh, provide jobs for Maricopa County residents. And then the last piece of this, I've branded this office as the most important office that most people have never heard of. They're making decisions about you in the dark. And so I plan to bring accountability to the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors, putting our work in the public space, making sure the residents of Maricopa County has an opportunity to have a voice in the democracy and the governing process. That's a little bit about me and the Maricopa County Board of Supervisors. I have to say it is an honor to be here with you all. I had the fortune of serving um, as the vice chairman of the Arizona Democratic Party, where I was the youngest statewide African-American Democratic official in the United States. That's where I got to learn about the amazing man, Mr. Mayor Pete himself. And um, it's, just, it's just been a, an a incredible adventure. And so I'm excited to be with you all today. Thanks so much, Jevin. And I think everybody now has a feel for uh, why we thought uh, uh, it would be uh, 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 so exciting to introduce you to our supporters. Uh, you know, uh, look, not everybody thinks of uh, uh, county supervisor office as sexy, uh, but as you just explained, uh, this is where decisions get made that affect people's lives. And uh, I know that you're coming at this with a heart for service. I can also uh, uh, vouch for the impressive character of, uh, of Ms. Bernetta uh, Hodge after uh, you introduced me to your mom uh, recently. And uh, uh, so uh, uh, some big fan there. Uh, and uh, we're, we're so glad to, uh, to be pulling for you. Uh, so now that I have a chance to, to introduce you, I know we got to, uh, some questions teed up too. Uh, let me uh, uh, kick it back to Marcus to moderate. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you. I think we have, again, if you have a question, we'll populate it in the question and answer box. But first up, we have Alex from Washington. Alex, can you, there you go. Hi. Uh, I'm Alex, and my question is, um, what qualities, uh, in your opinion, does a good leader embody, and how do the people that you endorse live out those qualities in their service? Great question, and uh, uh, you know that's uh, the question that's really been on our uh, minds and hearts as we've been uh, looking for uh, who to ask you to help mobilize behind. The first thing I would say, and I think you heard it in uh, uh, what, uh, uh, what both Javin and, and Mayor Hachowski were saying, is leadership is not about the person seeking the office. It's about the people you're gonna serve. Uh, it, it was a quality and, and an ethic that was uh, drilled into me in the form of the simple custom uh, among military officers, that when you're an officer among those that, uh, that you're leading, uh, the custom is that when, when uh, it's uh, time to uh, get food, you, the officer eats last. It's a little reminder uh, that the leader is there uh, to support those uh, who they would lead rather than the other way around. Uh, and I think that spirit, uh, the fact that uh, just now when, uh, when both of them were speaking, they were talking not, about, not much about themselves, much more uh, about uh, uh, the impact uh, that they could have and those they could help. That's something we're really looking for. Uh, another is uh, having a sense of what an office is for. Uh, running for an office, not uh, because of the title, not because of the uh, the prestige that comes with it, but because of the effect that holding that office can have, seeing the difference that it would make for them and not somebody else to have that role. And that's a quality that shines through, I think, in all of the, the 22 endorsed candidates that, uh, uh, that we've announced our support for. Some of them have had a chance to uh, demonstrate it in office. Those who are up for re-election or uh, for a new office. Others, as they approach office, 
for the first time. Uh, another quality that I think is, is really important is the ability to establish that sense of belonging that we care about so much. Uh, and uh, that, that's an intangible quality that you see just radiate through in, in, in the character of the campaigns. And uh, it's something that, uh, that, that we're on the lookout for uh, and will continue to be as we start uh, sourcing toward uh, uh, future uh, candidates and campaigns to support too. So uh, when uh, uh, Team Pete, when you see that quality out there, uh, you know it when you see it, uh, as you do in these indoor seasons. I hope you'll uh, continue to let us know about uh, people you were excited on that front. Thanks for a great question, Alex. Great. Next up, I think we have uh, Gayatri from New Jersey. Hi, Mayor P. I'm Gayatri, a college student from New Jersey, and I really love volunteering and donating to your campaign. So my question is, what are effective ways to digitally organize to support these candidates you endorse? Great question, and thanks for your support for us and your enthusiasm. Uh, and uh, I'll invite uh, Christine and Jeb both to, to say a word uh, about what uh, uh, would make the biggest difference for them. But let me share some things that are important across the board. Of course, candidates need financial support, but that's uh, just one thing that we can do. Another is to help them get their name out there. So when you talk about digital organizing, I would break it down into two categories. One is uh, what I'm going to call broadcast. In other words, when you tweet, when you put out an Instagram post, when you blast something out into the world for everybody to see, uh, it's a way to just uh, uh, stick up your hand. It's, it's the equivalent of, uh, uh, for now at least, it's, it's the equivalent of having that yard sign or bumper sticker or, uh, or, or being there to, uh, uh, to just uh, let the world know that you support a candidate. The other is a little more customized and tailored, and that's to reach out to people in your life to ask them to get involved, whether they could be contributing as donors, whether maybe they uh, live or, or vote or have people uh, in their family or, or social circles who do in uh, the, the city or the district or the jurisdiction where somebody's running. Uh, making sure that they hear from you why you're excited about these candidates. That's the most powerful way uh, to get somebody's attention. It's one thing for them to see an ad. It's another for them to hear someone that they know uh, to, uh, uh, to say, this is why I'm supporting this candidate. I know that you and I probably both share the instinct that we'd love to be walking through the doors of the campaign office for these candidates right now. And obviously, we're all uh, constrained and held back from a lot of the best parts of in-person campaigning. That doesn't mean that, that uh, we're stuck on the sidelines. It just means we've got to be creative. Uh, and uh, it'll vary by campaign. Some may be doing virtual phone banks, text banks, uh, or other ways of reaching voters too. Uh, and so uh, let, let me invite Jeb and Christine both uh, uh, briefly to say a word about uh, things that, uh, that people can do digitally uh, right now that might make a difference. Yeah, um, Pete is spot on as always. And there's that relational organizing aspect that you can also have digitally. Um, so I know when um, candidates that I support um, talk about things that resonate with me, resonate with my friends. So every time Pete talked about mental health issues, I would lift up those positions that he had and share it with my friends and my networks and explain to why that that's so important to us. These shared values that candidates have with the people you know, with the experiences uh, your friends and neighbors have had, um, the more you can do to talk about the candidates and why their values are values you share and um, will make a difference in your lives, I think that's um, digitally a great thing that you can do for all of us. Yep, that, that, that's exactly right. And I think that the two things that I would add to that is um, uh, understanding that in any campaign, the three things that are needed is time, talent, and treasure. And everyone understands the treasure, right? If you have an extra dollar to give, please encourage someone to donate um, and, 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 and donate and, and give to these campaigns, our campaigns, um, talent. It, you running a campaign is much like having a business. And so if you have a skill that you think that is valuable for a campaign, whether that's button making, leather, you have beautiful handwriting and you would like to help write letters, um, uh, graphic design, some of the most simple skills that you may have acquired over time, find your favorite candidate and you can donate that time because I can promise you that that, um, and donate that talent, which is gonna equate the time, the most important aspect in the campaign. Um, and if you have five minutes, ask your favorite candidate if you can do text one-to-one -one outreach, or if you can do make phone calls, or invite folks to just simply like their page. Um, like Mayor Christine said, that relational organizing is the most important component. And the last thing I'll leave you with is something I, I leave with everyone. Invite or challenge five people to either register to vote 
or look up your favorite candidate. And that's how we spread that message and continue to challenge folks, either challenge them to vote, or if you have an early vote system, sign up for the early vote system of your respective state and invite them to like or um, read, an information, read some information or watch a video of your favorite candidate. Do that every day, challenge five people, and that's how we spread the message. Well said, and uh, uh, thanks, uh, Gadri, for the question, because uh, uh, we're all finding new ways to, to step up and make a difference, and uh, I knew that you'd hear great answers there on uh, concrete steps that we can take. Thank you. We have time for uh, one more question, and I think it's a good follow-up, actually. Uh, it was in, somebody put it in the text box. So specifically for uh, Mayor Hanchofsky and Devin, uh, people want to know where to go to be most impactful uh, to remotely volunteer. So if there's a website or certain thing that you want the folks here to do, let us know. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and that was, a, it was an anonymous question, so. Um, since uh, I have a very difficult last name, as uh, Mayor Pete can attest to, <laughs> um, my website's easy. It's christineforflorida.com. I'm also on Twitter and Facebook. And I love hearing from people. Um, a lot of people like to private message. Um, I always say that as um, candidates and as public servants, we can't know everything. So the feedback we get from individuals and the more um, individual experiences we hear, um, th that's great. So I'm at christineforflorida.com. Devin? Yes, and please sign up to volunteer. Mayor Christine is incredible. We need her in the Florida State House. Um, for me, um, if you go to jevinhodge.com, J-E-V-I-N-H-O-D-G-E.com, and you click on Join the Movement tab, you can sign up right there to volunteer um, and receive our updates. And if you're a social media person, like us on Facebook at jevin for arizona or Twitter, where we just released the High Hopes Dance at Jevin4AZ. Reach out to us. I or the Hodge team is very responsive. So we respond to every message. And if you're an email person, info at jevinhodge.com, and we'll be sure to get you involved. Thank you for asking that question. Great. And Mayor, we'll kick it over to you to close us out. But thank you, everybody, for joining us. All right. Well, uh, a big thank you to everybody who's on the call right now. And thanks again for joining us, Christine and, and Jevin, uh, who are going to uh, continue to be, uh, I think, great leaders in, in the years to come, uh, which is why we've got to do everything we can to make sure that they're successful uh, in this election. Uh, take some time to uh, check out winthera.com. There will be links to uh, uh, the websites and a profile on each of the candidates that we're endorsing. Uh, and uh, again, asking you to contribute. Uh, whatever you can by way of uh, time, talent, and treasure. I like that. I'm going to use that uh, to help each of those candidates, as well as giving us ideas uh, for uh, causes and, and people you think are important for, for us to continue looking at as an organization. This whole effort is fueled by you, by your continued commitment to the values that, that animated the Pete for America campaign and that bring us together uh, through this election cycle and in the years to come. It's never been more important. We're being reminded of, of it every day. And as beaten down as I know it, we feel sometimes uh, by uh, just a torrent of bad news and, and, and failed leadership, uh, this is our chance to really feel good about, uh, about what we're doing because uh, we get this right. Uh, we make sure that we send and or return these remarkable public servants to office. Uh, we are going to be so proud of what we did. Uh, when we look back at 2020 and start truly winning the year after what we believe in. So thank you for your commitment. Thank you for your energy. Thank you for your support. Uh, and again, Marcus, thanks to you and the team for a big push that uh, made it possible for us to have this uh, big news this week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks.